Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a patient with a very strong Bell's reflex. And I'm going to show you, in essence, a atraumatic two-handed technique. You need two hands in order to control an eye that won't straighten out or, you know, when a patient is not cooperative. So an atraumatic two-handed technique is really the way to go. And I'll show you how I do this. So you can see this patient, this is a left eye. The patient's really having a hard time. He's looking up, which is towards the right side of the screen. I'm using a cotton tip to help manipulate the eye downward. I'm using a corneal marker, which will help me center and size my rexus. I'm asking the patient to look down. And because I don't trust him, I'm using the cotton tip to support the eye as he looks down. And then I make my paracentesis incision, which is flat to the iris plane. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. You can see how this patient's got these quick jerking movements. And this is pretty standard for a patient with a very strong Bell's reflex. So I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine and I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber and flatten the anterior capsule. I'm using the candle to turn the eye away from me and then I make a vertical groove, trying to place the blade into the deep part of the groove. This patient again is not reliable with his movements. I'm tunneling through the cornea, and then I use a cannula to turn the eye towards me, and then I enter. That's the triplanar corneal incision. So I'm using the cannula now to hold the eye in the orlock technique. So I'm holding it and turning it downward, which is towards the left. I'm going in with the forceps sideways. Because I have my triplanar incision, it is a little bit more challenge. I puncture centrally and pull downward towards me. I'm grabbing the right side of the tear, which creates a flap. And I'm going around circumferentially, trying to follow my corneal marks. You can see I'm using the cannula in an atraumatic fashion to hold the eye still and to pull it downward, which is towards the left. Again, this patient is not very reliable. So a two-handed technique is really very helpful for these cases. So the rexus goes uneventfully here. I go ahead and finish it off. And then I burp from viscoelastic. Start the capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place the cannula underneath the rexus edge to the contralateral equator. Get a nice fluid wave turning the tip down turn the tip back up, decompress on the left side, and then take the tip to the right side, pointing downward, and you get a nice rotation of the lens. And start irrigating the surface of the cornea, making sure my sleeve is just right. These patients who tend to have a Bell's reflex and squeeze also liberate a lot of meromian gland oil, so I'm really profusely irrigating the surface. I use a chopper to lift the incision, go in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma. I'm removing the surface epinuclear material, place the chopper out underneath the anterior capsule around to the equator, turn the phaco tip vertically subincisionally, crushing the lens completely in half, place the chopper out around the contralateral equator, pulling it centrally, crushing it against the phaco tip, and that's the cross chop. The first is double chop, this is a cross chop. I lift that third quadrant up out of the bag using crushing forces and then emulsify the lens pieces with high vacuum. I place the chopper around the second quadrant, pulling it up and emulsifying the lens piece. I turn the second heminucleus in front of me, place the chopper around the lens piece, crushing it towards the phaco tip and then using the chopper and high vacuum to emulsify the lens pieces. You can see this is a fairly soft lens. Once all the endonuclease are removed, I remove the epinuclear material from the anterior portion first. I take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the phaco tip out and put the INA handpiece. I start subincisionally, sweeping side to side, making sure I get occlusion 
and then teasing it, not just with high vacuum, but using mechanical forces. I feel like the teasing motion allows me a lot more control as I can mechanically tease it off before I activate that really high vacuum. I switch to the polish mode to remove all of the lens epithelial cells underneath the rexus edge. So I'm fairly confident I got all the cortical material out. Once I polish underneath the rexus, I start polishing the posterior capsule. You saw those little fine wisps that were adherent to the posterior capsule. So once it's nice and clean, I'm going to use a cannula to pulse underneath the subincisional capsular fornix to make sure there's no pieces of cortical material hidden from me. In this case, it's pretty clean. And then I inject some cohesive viscoelastic to fill the bag in the chamber. And then I'm using the sweep to sweep underneath the rexus edge of any more lens epithelial cells. Once I feel pretty good it's clean, I go ahead and inject a single piece of acrylic intraocular lens into the capsular bag, placing the leading edge within the bag and the trailing edge out of the bag. I go in and then inflate the bag with irrigation and then make sure the haptics are off the optic, go under the optic, tilt it and rotate it 90 degrees and removing all the viscoelastic from within the bag. So I start to polish underneath the rexus edge to remove any more lens epithelial cells. In doing this maneuver, it already turned the haptics horizontally, so I switched to the visco mode, removing all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber, and then I hydrate my incisions. So you can see this patient had a really strong Bell's reflex, which turned the eye up. It's very hard to do the maneuvers when the eye is not straight up and down. And so using a two-handed technique in an atraumatic way by using a cotton tip at the beginning of the case and then using the cannula within the incision allows me excellent control. I'm not using forceps, which if you use forceps, you can accidentally rip the tissue if the patient suddenly jerks against you. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.